So I want to give you this morning a quick recipe. For the ingredients that God likes in his worship. So here is how God likes his worship based on the Bible. Number one, we worship with our voice. And number number Our voice can do many things. So one way that we see worship in scripture is by speaking praise to God. Psalm 34 verse 1. Amen. Amen. My Bible says that I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. Now sometimes we can think that worship is only about music. But worship is an offering of our lives to God that can be seen in many ways. So we can speak the praise of God even if Razu is not playing the guitar. Without any music, without any speakers, we can speak the praise of God. Say this right, say this with me. God, I praise you. You did it! You spoke the praises of God. That is one way that you worship God by speaking. Now that's one way. The next way with our voice is by shouting. Let's look at another verse. Psalm 27, verse 6. And since we are in his church, in his house, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. Now sometimes I don't feel like shouting. But there are times when I need to shout. Are you guys fans of football here? Soccer. Now, when your team scores a goal, you stay silent. You go crazy, right? Now, sometimes we get more excited about soccer, football. Then we do our King Jesus. Some people have no problem shouting, Go! But some people struggle shouting, Jesus! Now that's one way that we worship God. Is by shouting his praise. Amen. 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 So we speak. We shout. And then we sing. 
This is what we do with our voice. We're familiar with that. We're more comfortable with that. And maybe we're more used to that. So let's look at another verse. Psalm 47. Verse 6. Sing praise to God. Now it doesn't say to wait for the music to sing to God. The place, the place where our team is staying right now has concrete walls. So any sound that we make in our hotel is heard everywhere in the hotel. And many mornings, we get to hear the pleasant sound of Pastor Brent singing to God. Sometimes it's very good. And then there's other times. <laughs> but he is singing his praise to God without a guitar, without a piano, without, without drums. He's just singing to God. I sing the praises of God. I get some funny looks sometimes. I get some funny looks sometimes. That's okay. I love God. And there's times where I just got to sing. There's times where there's a song in my heart. And I just have to get it out. And I just have to get it out. Sing praise to God. 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 Sing praise Sing praise to our King. Sing praise to God. Sing praise to Sing praise Amen. Amen. Okay, so we worship God with our voice. And number two, we see or we worship God with our posture. So here's some ways in our posture that we worship the Lord. Remember, we're just looking at the Bible. And we're looking in the book of Psalms. Because this book is the instructions of how to worship. So here's how we worship with our posture. Psalm 95. Verse 6. Uh, top. Yes, I will make you. Bowing before the king is a sign of honor. It's a sign of humility. It's telling the person that you bow to that you are very important to me. So God likes to be worshipped through bowing. Because he is king. He is master. He is the Lord. So there's times when we worship God simply by bowing down. And this posture of humility. To clear our 
declaring with our body that Jesus, you are king. When we work, when we look at the word humility, that means getting down low in our posture. And when we approach God in worship, we have to make sure that it's in a place of humility with no evidence of pride. Remember the book of James says that God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble. So when we approach God in worship, we need to be sure that we do it in humility. Now sometimes this is hard for worship teams. We stand up here on this stage high above everybody else while people sing and lift their hands towards us and if we're not careful we can start thinking that we're the ones getting worshipped one of the most important things for worship ministry is to approach God every time in humility. I believe that one of the greatest attacks to worship ministry is pride. We have to watch our pride. And that's really hard in what we do. Last night at the concert was amazing. But if I'm being honest, I had to watch my heart. As people wanted to dance with us and sing with us and take pictures with us. I had to make sure that I came to the Lord that any bit of pride would be rooted out of me. Because last night was really fun. But it wasn't about me. It wasn't about my team. It definitely wasn't about my son. It was about Jesus. Hallelujah. One way to move past pride is to bow before the Lord. I try to before every worship session uh, go into my office and bow before the Lord asking Him to keep me humble. Because my church loves me. They love worshiping with me. But if I'm not careful, I'll think they're worshiping me. And they're not. But sometimes I can get that in me. So I get before the Lord and I remind myself by bowing before God that He is King and I am nothing but a servant. Amen. Amen. So we worship God with our posture through bowing. We can also worship God just by standing. Let's read it in 1 Chronicles. Uh, 
Oilo Itihas, chapter 23. Oilo Itihas, go teis, botko, teis o diego. Verse 30. Tis potani, no way. Yes, yes, I will give you a hurry. The Hana put here, or on probably Arana Taramsu, Manera, one of us, right? If I don't want to be here, I'm here. Anyway, standing before somebody is a sign of honor. If we were seated in this room right now, and a very high official in your government walked in, you may be inclined to stand. Or if it's a famous football athlete, you might just stand up if they walk in the room. Without, without even thinking about it. But when we stand, we show honor. In America, maybe it's like this here. When two become married, there's a beautiful wedding. I'm reminded of my teammates here. Caleb and Autumn. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> they recently just got married. Woo! Woo! <laughs> they had a very beautiful wedding. And in the ceremony of the wedding, all of the guests were sitting until the beautiful bride walked down the aisle and her mother stood up and, and everyone in the room stood up as well. Showing honor to the bride. Now, that is a sign of honor. Standing. There are times when I do not feel like standing. I'm not going to lie. I joked around a lot last night. I exercised a lot last night. I was very sweaty. And this morning, I was a little sore. I did not want to get out of bed. I did not want to stand up. But I needed to stand up to show honor to God that I was going to come here today. Regardless of how I felt. Standing before the Lord is a sign of honor. Which is a sign of worship. Okay, so we bow. We stand. And number three, we dance before the Lord. We dance. One, Psalm chapter 149. 149. Verse 3. Verse 3. Now there, there are times when we worship where we get a little excited. At Sun City Church, we lead worship in such a way that it's a celebration. Jesus has done so much for us that when we worship we get a little excited. We get a little loud. And sometimes we dance a little. Because we love Him. And He loves it when we dance before Him. Sometimes this might feel a little uncomfortable. 
Sometimes it might not be culturally acceptable. But the instructions for worship in Psalms they remind us that God likes to be worshipped with dance. In fact, there's one point where David himself he proclaims that I'll become more undignified than this. Meaning, I won't be embarrassed by worshiping God. I won't be embarrassed by getting excited. I won't be embarrassed for smiling and laughing in His presence. Many times in our church, new people that come ask me a question. Why are you so excited at a church service in the morning? And I just smile back at them. And I tell them, because Jesus has saved me. And that's what we're celebrating. And He can save you. And He can save your loved ones. And He loves them so dearly. So what else would I do to celebrate His goodness? We love to celebrate all that God has done. And that is one major part of worship. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, we worship God with our voice. We worship God with our posture. And we worship God with our hands. You all got hands? You can worship God. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the Bible. Psalm 33. Verse 2 through 3. Now God has skilled some of us to play musical instruments. Some can play guitar. Some can play the piano. Some can play the drums. Some can play all of those things. But we are to make music to the Lord to worship Sometimes that can just be tapping and making, making a drum beat and worshiping the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Simple. Right? This, this is a great instrument. That sounds really good. You might need to use this in work. Sorry, I get distracted. We worship God with the instrument, and that can mean skillfully played. In fact, it says in that verse. That we are to play skillfully. Now, I can play the guitar, but I can also sing. Both of those are an instrument. So whether you can play an actual instrument, or if you can play this instrument, it's 
You are to do those skillfully before the Lord. And he is very good at it. I was only was that guy only was in their life. And that was simple of regard to what he said. The guy was only got to pass on to the best of your ability. Ah, I'm only Zane Gora. I'm not sure about it. I go put cut at what you have to face for the new person. That's why worship ministry is so important. This is why the Monday night Aaron and Kosheva are so important. It's because God gives gifts of music. Um, I mean, as far as the Param Prabhu Parmesh was this, some music for him to be able to bring down the music. To some people to lead us in the worship. I mean, he brought down by the best of the just the Param Prabhu and Prakta Gora. All the man is a guy. Aaron, now go and do it. God anoints musicians to play. I mean. परम प्रभु ने संगीत सुनलाई बजाऊं को निंति अभिषेक दिन हो जाए। Now the first time I picked up a guitar was really bad. अब मैंने जब वह पहले पड़ा कि आराधना में गिटार बजाए को थे तीन तीन एक दम एक खराब समय हुआ। In fact, my mom begged me to stop. अन्य मेरो आम आले आ रहे हैं जब ना बजा भाई बने छोरा बने ना रोक लो। So I stopped. मैंने रोके। And I got a drum set. अन्य मैं फिर ड्रॉप दिल लाई। And my mom wished I would have stayed with the guitar. <laughs> so I learned how to play the drums when I was 13 years old. And I played and I played and I played. And over time, I developed the skill of being a good drummer. And then I was able to help lead people into worship with that gift of drumming. अनि drum बजार मोजे मानी सर लाई परम प्रभु परमेश्वर को आराधना में आवाज़ आएगा तो सब निभाए। Now if I didn't practice the drums, मैंने जिरे ही अभ्यास तो करी ना। I would not be helpful in worship. अनि ये दिन मैंने क्यों अभ्यास करा था बस मोजे क्यों क्यों मतलब सिर्फ ना आवाज़ आएगा तो मानी सर लाई आराधना में आवाज़ आएगा तो सब निभाए। अनेक मौजे के बजाव में जाने का मतलब एकदम ही संगीत जुन्ना में हम खेला हुए लगा चावन मतलब बुद्धि वाला। You would all hate it। अन सुबह में आने चाहते थे घर आकर सुबह सुन्ना साथ आए नंतिस तो अभी अभी व्यस्ति बजाए। But in my life, I've taken the gift of God of music। अनेक तरह मेरे जीवन में मैंने संगीत बजाव में करी थी परम प्रभु का डरदार जब आए। And I've developed it। अनेक मैंने त्यस so we're now I can help lead people in worship. अनि ती कार्य में बात करें और ये भी नहीं मज़ार है मानी सुबह पढ़ने सुबह मास आराधना मार्ग वाला ना सबसे। We have two responsibilities here. अनि सभी अब दो टाइम और तो बड़े जीवन आ रहे हैं। Number one is we need to learn the skill for ourselves. अब पहले पूरा सही अनि आपने ये मज़ार में को लाके सीख लो पर सब। Then once we know a skill very well, जब हम ले रहे हैं हम लोग प्रकारी बजाव में सीख जाऊँ। We need to teach someone else that skill. अब और को पूरा सही जो मौत को पढ़ना चाहिए हम ले और उन्हें इस तरह के बजाव में सीख आऊँ बड़ी बात है। It's some help if I am the only guitar player in my church. अब विचार तो यदि मैं मेरे मंडली में मैं मात्र ही गिटार बजाव में मानती हूँ बने। But it's a huge help if we have four guitar players in our church. बहुत ही कार्य हो तो यदि मंडली में सारे सारे गिटार बजाव में मानते हैं बने मंडली में सब की जोर जोर से वो क्या बोला कि चुलो सायता हो जाए। There are more churches to build. अरे ये सारी ने अभी जैसे मंडली निर्माण करने सब। There are more nations to go to. अरे उधर वो देरे मंडली में बारे सायता करने सब सब देरे देश और में बारे सेवा करने सब सब। There are more worship teams to build all over the world. अरे देरे सब ये झुंडा और भी सब भरी देश इस्तेमाल करने सब सब। And if I keep my gift to myself, मैंने मेरे बारे में वो मामला तो सीमित गाने में। That is doing no good to reach the world. अरे मानी सर का पुण्य र Every church that gets planted, needs the minstrels to go with it. It needs musicians. It needs singers. It needs people to help lead others into the presence of God. So if I keep my gift all to myself, I'm doing very little to impact the kingdom of God. So we have two responsibilities: learn a skill for ourselves, and develop the skill to teach others. That's what my son was talking about. On day pura mero chora le aur ki bandar bunte. He picked up a bass guitar a few years ago. On kei paas wakar wale bass guitar dinu ba. And he learned a lot. On dheere si ke wale. But every now and then he would have questions. On ye bharik samay usko ka prasna hoti ho. And he would come to me and ask those questions. On tu prasna mukaar sochiyo. 
I was able to take my gift and raise my son up to become a great musician. And he's very good. And I'm thankful for him. But his responsibility doesn't stop there. He's thinking about others that he can teach. That's how the kingdom of God multiplies. Hallelujah. So we play instruments with our hands. Here's one of my favorites. We, we clap with our hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at the Bible. Psalm 47, verse 1. You can do it. Come everyone, clap your hands. Now, there's a question of why would we clap together? And here's what's amazing is that clapping is a unity builder. The Lord can bless unity. And when we worship together, it's important that we're in unity. Some people cannot play an instrument very well. Some people definitely cannot sing very well. Everybody can clap. But it's amazing when we clap together what can happen. Watch. Clap with me. We're all united right now. This is unity. But I still love to pray. 
So we raise our hands as a son to a father also. When we lift our hands together or to the Lord, we know that it is a sign of surrender. If you think about your hands, every work that comes out of your life comes from your hands. Anything you do comes from your hands. So when we lift our hands to God, we are surrendering our entire life, our work, everything to the King. We are saying, God, I surrender. My hands are yours. My life is yours. All that I am is yours. When we lift our hands to God, we're declaring he is king. He is master. He is in control. Amen. Amen. All of these methods of worship, so we have we we sorry, sorry, we start with our voice. We worship God with our posture. We worship God with our hands. And worship can include all of these things. Or some of these things. Depending on what we're doing. But what we have to remember is that God loves us to worship Him how He likes. There might be ways that I like to worship, but this is how God likes to be worshipped. It really doesn't matter how we like to worship. It only matters how God likes to worship. Amen. Amen. Can I pray?